Following the recent announcement that scientists at the National Ignition Facility NIF, in California had for the first time managed to produce more energy from a fusion experiment than was put in, the question arises, what next? Physicists have pursued the dream of controlled nuclear fusion since the 1950s because it promises a potential source of near limitless clean energy. Fusion works by forcing light nuclei, such as those of hydrogen, together to make heavier nuclei, such as those of helium, with the release of large amounts of energy. It's the opposite of nuclear fission, where heavy nuclei, like those of uranium, are split apart. Fission is the technology currently used in nuclear power stations, but a major disadvantage of it is that it produces large amounts of long-lived radioactive waste, which is expensive to store safely. Nuclear fusion produces far more energy and only small amounts of short-lived radioactive waste. It also emits no greenhouse gases and so doesn't contribute to global warming. But one of the great challenges it poses is that fusing nuclei together requires extraordinarily high temperatures and pressures. In the NIF experiment, a tiny amount of hydrogen, in fact a frozen mixture of the isotopes deuterium and tritium, was put into a capsule the size of a peppercorn. Then 192 powerful lasers were used to heat the hydrogen fuel to 100 million degrees Celsius and compress it to more than 100 billion times that of Earth's atmosphere. This caused the hydrogen in the capsule to implode and undergo fusion. Just over 2 million joules of energy were injected into the target, which then produced just over 3 million joules of fusion energy output, a roughly 50% increase. For the first time ever, a laboratory fusion experiment had produced more energy than it consumed. But let's get things in perspective the energy output was only enough to boil about 15 kettles worth of water. And although 2 million joules of energy was actually supplied to the target, the bank of lasers consumed 150 times that much energy in the process. To demonstrate that the type of fusion studied at NIF can be a viable way of producing energy, the efficiency of the yield the energy released compared to the energy that goes into producing the laser pulses needs to be boosted by a factor of more than a hundred. Researchers will also need to dramatically increase the rate at which the lasers can produce the pulses and how quickly they can clear the target chamber to get it ready for the next burn. Needless to say, NIF wasn't built to be a commercial fusion reactor or to be in any way efficient. In fact, its original purpose was weapons research. And it's fair to say that a lot of researchers question whether laser-driven fusion is the best approach for practical fusion power plants. Another major approach involves magnetic confinement. In other words, using a powerful magnetic field to hold the hot hydrogen in place, typically in a donut-shaped chamber while fusion takes place. This is the strategy being used at ITER, I-T-E-R, which means the way in Latin, a $22 billion project that's a collaboration between China, the European Union, India, Japan, Korea, Russia, and the United States. Upon completion of construction of the main reactor in late 2025, it will be the largest magnetic confinement plasma physics experiment and the largest experimental tokamak nuclear fusion reactor in the world. While NIF has scored a magnificent first in achieving ignition, extracting more energy from fusion than was put in, ITER is intended as a technological demonstration of a large fusion reactor and to achieve enough fusion to produce 10 times as much thermal output power as thermal power absorbed by the plasma. By 2035, 
The goal is for ITER to have achieved a deuterium tritium plasma in which the fusion is sustained mostly by internal fusion heating and to generate 500 megawatts of fusion power from 50 megawatts of input heating power. ITER and NIF are just two of the larger experimental fusion reactor schemes in various stages of use and development around the world. Exciting progress is being made, but the technological challenges that remain are formidable. We are likely to have to wait until at least 2050 before the first electricity generated by nuclear fusion enters our homes.